We already have finished more than half of the proof, so let us summarize the main idea. First, we randomly generate m codewords in the alphabet x hat to the power n, according to p x hat to the power n, where n is large. For the strong AEP, the source sequence x is in the S set with high probability. For a particular source sequence x in the S set, by the conditional strong AEP, the probability that it is jointly typical with a particular coword is approximately equal to 2 to the power minus n times i x x hat. If m grows with n at a rate higher than i x x hat, then the probability that there exists at least one coword which is jointly typical with the source sequence x with respect to p x x hat is high. Such a coword, if exists, would have distortion approximately equal to the expected distortion between the random variable x and the random variable x hat because the joint relative frequency of the source sequence x and this coword is approximately equal to the joint probability of x and x hat. In other words, if the source sequence and the coword are jointly typical, then the distortion of the coword is approximately equal to the expected distortion between the random variable x and the random variable x hat. This will be formally justified in the next proposition. We then use this coword to represent the source sequence x to satisfy the distortion constraint because the expected distortion between x and x hat is less than or equal to d. The next proposition says that for x hat such that the expected distortion between x and x hat is less than or equal to d, if a pair of sequences x and x hat are jointly typical, then the distortion between x and x hat is less than or equal to d plus d max times delta. The proof goes as follows. For x and x hat that are jointly typical, consider d x x hat equals 1 over n times summation k equals 1 up to n d x k x k hat. Now this summation can be written as summation x x hat d x x hat times n x x hat in the sequences x and x hat. In the next line, we add n p x x hat and minus n p x x hat. Now we multiply d x x hat by n p x x hat to obtain summation x x hat p x x hat times d x x hat, where this n cancels with this n. For this term n x x hat in the sequences x and x hat, upon multiplying by 1 over n, we obtain 1 over n times n x x hat in the sequences x and x hat. And for n p x x hat, we obtain p x x hat because this n and this n cancel with each other. Now this summation is simply equal to the expected distortion between the random variable x and the random variable x hat. For the second summation, for the expression inside the parenthesis, we upper bound it by means of the triangular inequality. Now d x x hat is upper bounded by d max, and this absolute value is less than or equal to delta because the sequences x and x hat are jointly typical with each other. Finally, the expected distortion between x and x hat is less than or equal to d. This completes the proof of the proposition. We only need to fill in the remaining details of the proof. 
for sufficiently large n, consider the probability that dx x hat is greater than d plus epsilon. This can be written as the probability of the event conditioning on k equals 1 times the probability that k is equal to 1, plus the probability of the event conditioning on k not equal to 1 times the probability that k is not equal to 1. Now the probability that dx x hat is greater than d plus epsilon conditioning on k equals 1 is less than or equal to 1. The probability that k is equal to 1 is less than or equal to epsilon, as we have shown. And the probability of k not equal to 1 is less than or equal to 1. So we have epsilon plus the probability that dx x hat is greater than d plus epsilon, conditioning on k not equal to 1. Recall that conditioning on k not equal to 1, the source sequence x and the reproduction sequence x hat are jointly typical. Then from the proposition that we have proved, the distortion between the source sequence x and the reproduction sequence x hat is less than or equal to d plus d max times delta. By taking delta less than or equal to epsilon divided by d max, we obtain d x x hat less than or equal to d plus d max times epsilon over d max, where this d max and this d max cancel with each other. And so, conditioning on k not equal to 1, d x x hat is less than or equal to d plus epsilon. Therefore, the probability that dx x hat is greater than d plus epsilon, conditioning on k not equal to 1, is equal to 0, which implies that the probability that dx x hat greater than d plus epsilon is less than or equal to epsilon. It is then apparent that the event k not equal to 0 corresponds to a successful encoding and the event k equals 1 corresponds to an encoding error. Thus, we have shown the existence of a code such that 1 over n times log m, that is the rate, is less than or equal to i x x hat plus epsilon by construction. And through our analysis, we see that the probability that d x x hat greater than d plus epsilon is less than or equal to epsilon. Hence, for any x hat such that the expected distortion between x and x hat is less than or equal to d, the pair i x x hat and d is achievable. Finally, minimize i x x hat over all such x hat to conclude that the pair Ri of d and d is achievable. By the definition of the rate distortion function R of d, this implies that Ri of d is greater than or equal to R of d. This picture explains intuitively why the rate of a rate distortion code that achieves a distortion d must be at least Ri of d. First of all, the number of typical x sequences is approximately equal to 2 to the power n times entropy of x. Now for each code word, which is a typical x hat sequence, is jointly typical with approximately 2 to the power n times entropy of x given x hat typical x sequences. Therefore, in order for most of the typical x sequences to be covered by at least one code word, the number of code words must be at least 2 to the power n times entropy of x divided by 2 to the power n times entropy of x given x hat, which is approximately 2 to the power n times i x x hat, 
where i x x hat is greater than or equal to r i of d. Therefore, the rate of such a code must be at least r i of d.